Economic observers in the country have raised concern over the proposed amendments to the Public Finance Management Act, which seeks to give the public debt office more powers. While giving their submissions, the observers said the move will set a dangerous precedent for the country as Parliament will cede its powers to the executive. Denis Otieno has more. First to appear before the Public Debt and Privatization Committee was Okoa Uchumi campaign team, which poked holes in the proposal to give the Public Debt Management Office a bigger role in the management of the country's runaway debt. At the minimum, it's easier to say that there shall be a special convening of Parliament at any given point when the Cabinet Secretary feels that they are no longer able to work within the, um, the provided threshold. But to legislate, to explain a breach, I think parliament is ceding their oversight power. For the treasury, it is just a supplies question. They need money to implement. For parliament, it goes beyond a supplies question. It goes to the public good of this acquisition, the public interest uh, of this kind of uh, acquisition. This matter without... Sentiments echoed by the Institute of Economic Affairs team who was second in submitting their proposal. As it is worded today, we think you have provided the discretion to the Cabinet Secretary to choose when to report to Parliament. Um, we don't think that's good, especially because managing public debt, which is... As an economist, public debt, when you have public debt approved, you've actually approved taxation in the future. And taxation powers in this republic belong to parliament and parliament alone. In the new Treasury proposals, the Public Debt Office is set to earn additional powers, including providing advisory on sustainable debt levels. At the moment, the functions of the office are limited to preparing key debt documents and policies. Observers also question the rationale behind the new policy of debt as share of GDP. So while Japan's debt to GDP is more than 100%, right, their debt servicing costs to revenues is 11. Our debt servicing to revenues this year is 56. So if you measure those, it already tells you that it is a more accurate picture about debt distress and the possibility of debt carrying capacity than it is. Besides cushioning the economy from shocks, the proposed changes in the PFM Act are expected to enhance transparency and accountability, two factors that economic observers who made their submissions today noted were lacking. We are of the view that the... Uh, deleting the word public debt from, um, as envisaged in clause 2, it actually delinks the contractual agreement from the public scrutiny uh, for, for, for county governments, uh, which will not really be uh, good enough. So in, 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 in our recommendation, uh, Chairman, we propose that um, that clause uh, that has been proposed should be deleted, the clause 2A. Further, there is need uh, to ensure that the placement of the, the public debt management office uh, guarantees uh, are guaranteed their independence and autonomy, and therefore uh, the advisory role uh, then we going directly to parliament will be uh, a, a step in the right move. We seem to have reached a level that is at crisis point. That crisis point has been reached because what parliament was doing and what the Ministry of Finance were doing were at variance. And this is why I'm talking about this amendment being negative. Denis Otieno, Citizen TV.